Hi everybody and welcome to the Mental Toughness and Body Show. My name is Rob Evans and I'm your weight loss coach, health strategist and internationally published author, helping take your life, your business, your body, your health, your wellness from where you are right now to where it is that you want to be. And today we're going to talk about power foods and why so many people get it wrong. Now this is a topic that can be quite complex, but I'm a man, I'm a man and I like to keep things simple. And this truly is a topic that I could spend days, if not weeks on talking about. So I'm going to try and condense the high level simple things for you in this next 15 to 20 minutes so that you can start to make perhaps some different decisions about what you're putting it into, into your body. Think about it like this. If you are not happy with the, bo- the body that you have right now, the physical body that you look in the mirror and you say, I don't like that. I would like to be more muscular. I would like it to be slimmer. I would like it to be more defined. And then if it's your inner health as well, I want to be more healthy. I want to get rid of my fatty liver. I want to reduce my risk of having type 2 diabetes, cancers, etc., etc. Then please listen right now because it doesn't matter what whether it's any of those particular goals that you want to achieve, what I'm going to tell you right now is going to have a dramatic impact in improving where you are to where you want to get to. It's all about timing. It's all about the the volume, the quantity, the feeding frequency, and the consistency that you implement. So the first thing I want to talk about is plant-based food. Now, I'm not talking about vegan here. I eat a heap of plant-based food, but I'm not vegan. I still eat my chicken, my fish, my beef. I still eat those. But what most people do do is tend to under-eat in terms of their plant-based food. (coughs) Oh, excuse me. That was a live sneeze. It's very um, high hay fever season right now. And I don't normally get it uh, a lot, but gee, there's a lot of pollen in the air at the moment. It's not even windy today, and I've been suffering a little bit this week, so I apologize. There might be another one coming. Plant-based food. I want to get you to think about these two different categories of plant-based food. High energy versus low energy. So when I talk about high energy plant-based food, I'm talking about things like potato, okay? Anything that is in the potato family. White potato, sweet potato, they're all in the same category there. The other, they're, and they're, they're really the main, the main categories. When it comes to your fruit, another plant-based food, really the only one I want you to think about there is, do you want to have a guess? Let me ask you this question. What do you think is pretty much one of the only high-energy fruits that we have? Have a think about it. And for those of you that said banana, you would be right, okay? And I'm going to talk about some principles in a second of the foods that we're eating. But your banana, so pretty much all your other fruits, even things like pineapple, apple, um, um, pears, mandarins, oranges, all those, I would put those into the low category, um, the low category area. So there's a lot of gold in plant-based food. Now, what most people tend to do, where the problem is that people undereat in their plant-based food. A typical meal, let's, for simplicity, we'll think about a dinner meal. What do most people normally eat too much of? Well, possibly at dinner time they eat too much protein. Maybe that's one of the only meals where they do that. They eat too much protein, not enough plant-based food, and too much of the high-energy food, which I'm going to talk about in a second. But that could be high-energy plant-based food, or it could be some other high-energy Um, complex carbohydrates that I'll talk about in a second. So with your plant-based food, if the whole world got this and ate more of it, we would nowhere near have the obesity or overweight problems that we do have globally. We just wouldn't. The problem is most people aren't doing it. So what did, what's the right thing to do? Well, in, depending on your country, you'll have some government guidelines as to what it is that you should be eating. For me personally, I aim to eat three cups of plant-based food with every single meal that I have, and I'm eating six meals a day. So yes, if you're good with maths, six times three, that's 18 plus cups of plant-based food a day. 
Okay, that's a lot. That's more than most people would be eating. But remember, I'm working towards a six pack. Now, if you want to improve your overall health, what I would suggest is you start with, say pick three meals, say breakfast, lunch, dinner, and aim to get at least three cups of plant-based food in there. So, and all low energy at this point, okay? Low energy plant-based food. How could you do that? People think, I couldn't eat vegetables in the morning. Well, there's a point in my life where I said the same thing, but it's about gradual change. Did I start with three cups of veggies one day and say, boom, that's what it's gonna be? No, I started with one to two and then moved it up from there. Oh, Siri, be quiet. Um, so, what I did is I started having omelets, okay? So I'd have a couple of cups of veggies with, a, with an omelet and I'd do it that way. Now what I'm doing, something that you would typically have for maybe a dinner, I'll have for breakfast. So for instance, I'll have like slow cooked beef um, with some legumes and that kind of stuff in there as well, um, delicious. And then I'll add uh, an extra couple of cups of vegetables with that so that I can um, get all the veggies that I need. I know that seems strange for a lot of people, but it's a great way to be eating, okay? And yeah, did I start doing that straight away? No, I didn't. I started out smaller volumes and built my, my way up. Now, let's talk about the types of plant-based food that we're talking, why, why this is so important. So when it comes to your plant food, I say pick at least three colors, okay? The more colorful the food is, the more rich in antioxidants, that's good for optimizing your health. Now, the other thing is, and it also keeps it interesting, like visually appealing. Now, the types of vegetables that I normally like to suggest are things like broccoli, cauliflower, um, carrot, your Asian greens, um, any of those, like knock yourself out. Just go for the vegetables that you like. Think about color. And the other thing I wanna mention is about crunch. I want you to keep your vegetables as crunchy as you can because when you digest them, you get this extra metabolic boost from your digestive system processing all this food. And that's what makes it really exciting. It's like putting your metabolism on a treadmill so while you're sitting, sleeping, even while you're exercising, it's gonna go fast, okay? Imagine your, your metabolism, it's like you running on the treadmill all the time, okay? So if we can get the speed that up, guess what? That speeds up the fat burning process, it's super, super powerful. When I made these changes in my life, man, the amount of fat that was stripping off me as a result of it is really quite impressive. So it's really super powerful. So think color, think crunch, think around two to three cups for breakfast, lunch and dinner, and that's a good place to start. Now that's low energy I'm talking about, no high energy. Let's hold over the high energy discussion until a little bit later coming up. Now, banana, people say, well, why banana? So think about the principles that I said before. We want to pick those foods that are colorful and crunchy. So what color's a banana? Now, people normally say yellow. So, okay, you're not a monkey, you're not eating the skin, and yeah, the skin is a bit crunchy. You're eating what's inside, what color's that? It's white, it's soft, we feed it to babies. What does that tell you? The digestive system doesn't work too hard to process it. Does that mean bananas are bad? No, it doesn't. I'll eat a banana from time to time, but when I want that high energy impact, not all the time. I've introduced things like berries, for instance, rather than those fruits. So I'll think about your mandarins or even grapes and, and things like that, kiwi fruit, um, you know, a whole rain, melons, you know, just knock yourself out. Go to the, and stand in front of the fruit and veg aisle and just say, Okay, what are some different things that I could try if you're a fussy eater? Don't just always eat like things like peas and corn. Go for things like snow peas, beans, uh, you know, some different things. Pumpkin, pumpkin is a low energy food. Okay, so knock yourself out. Just explore, just think, how can I get more of that in? Now I guarantee for probably most people listening to this right now, what I'm suggesting may be a stretch for you, but trust me, this is super, super powerful. Very low energy, they'll keep you fuller for longer, more fiber. That means you're going to binge less on uh, filling up on other foods as well, but you've also get a massive, massive nutrient hit and metabolic boost from this as well. The next thing I wanna talk about is protein. So protein, what is that? Protein is for building muscle. The more muscle that you have in your body, the faster your metabolism, the more fat you will burn, the, the stronger you will be, the leaner you will get, and the sexier your body will look. 
as a result of it. Now women, if you're worried about lifting weights and bulking up immensely, that will not happen to you because you don't have as much testosterone in your body compared to a man. So you're not going to get the same impact as a man. Okay, You're going to get toned and firm over time and that's what you want. So the sources of protein, well, the most common ones are things like chicken, turkey, lean fish. Or, or, or when I talk about these, I'm talking about all lean things. So taking uh, the skin off the, um, the turkey and the chicken, for instance. Uh, your lean beef, lean lamb, lean pork. Um, what else have we got? Oh, in, in our country, I know, don't freak out, but we do eat kangaroo, which is one of our national emblems. And I know it sounds weird, but it's one of the leanest meats on the planet. It is so, it's a bit richer, it's a bit gamey. Uh, but it is super, super lean. Even crocodile, we do eat crocodile. I've never tried that, um, but that's also very lean. Uh, but yeah, they're the common, the common sources. And then if you're vegetarian, you might have things like your, your, uh, your legumes. Um, you might have things like tofu, um, which is bean curd. Uh, you know, um, eggs are also another good source of protein, which are, some vegetarians will eat eggs, uh, but some, some won't. Um, your vegans, vegans can be a bit tougher um, getting all your plant-based food, for, sorry, all your protein from plant-based food uh, can be difficult because you get to that point where the volume of plant-based foods you need to eat to get the protein that you need can counteract the, the calories. So um, that can be more tricky. It's not impossible, but it just becomes more challenging. The other great sources of protein are making sure that you've got a good whey protein uh, powder substitute for your protein because um, what I find is that it can be really challenging to get in all your six meals when you've got a really hectic schedule. This is why I find smoothies fantastic. A cup of frozen fruit, a cup of uh, water, uh, I put in some omega-3 like some chia seeds and then I put in, I use my isogenics powder, um, that's the best one that I've found and it'll keep me full of long, it tastes fantastic. And that's a good substitute. Vegan, you can use a rice or a pea protein um, to get your protein source from there. So there's many different options, uh, but making sure that we get the right amount of protein for your body weight and your goals is really, really important. Most people underdo their protein. They may overdo it at dinner time. Think about a chicken parma and how it hangs off the plate and, and that sort of stuff. We're not talking about that. Generally speaking, we're talking about Oh, you've probably heard this as a guide. Imagine, hold out your hand with your fingers outstretched, cut your fingers off, and it's about the size of your palm of your hand. Don't go and cut your fingers off, but just visually remove your fingers. Uh, and that's about the size of your, uh, your protein, not too thick. All right? Uh, the next thing is about your high energy or your complex carbohydrates. Here, what I'm talking about are things like your potato. I'm also talking about um, I'm talking about your uh, things like rice, pasta, bread, um, those type of grains, those types of things are really, really important. The problem is, you know, hear people say, I don't eat carbs. Well, let me put this to you. If you don't eat carbs, you'll die. People are normally talking about they don't eat the high energy carbs, not the low energy. The trouble is most people don't eat enough low energy carbs either so they can find they feel pretty crappy after a while. So the high energy carbs, what does that suggest? It's going to keep your energy higher for longer. So for me, for instance, I would have half a cup of brown rice with a meal, half a cup, that's it. And you might say, wow, that's not much. Most people might have a cup or more of rice, which is just too much of the high energy food. Okay, you wanna cut that down, Fill yourself more up with vegetables. This is for your long-term health and also the body that you want. It's going to better serve that. And again, for some people, this is an adjustment because what do, certainly in my country, most people tend to eat toast for breakfast. They'll have bread for lunch. They'll have, um, you know, maybe so, something like a muffin, which has got uh, flour and, um, you know, high energy sugar and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, in it for morning tea. So you find throughout the day, if you write down everything that you have, you might find that you're having a lot of high energy food, which isn't 
necessarily awesome for you. It's not that you can't have it, it's about the timing, the frequency, and the serving size that you would have. So as a general guide for somebody that I'm putting to start with on a weight, like an introductory weight loss program, or somebody that's looking to optimize their health but maintain their weight, I would say breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you want to get in about half a cup of high energy food, along with your plant-based food and your protein, but that might be the equivalent of, say, a piece of toast, along with those other things. It might be some rolled oats. It might be some natural muesli. It might be your rice, half a cup of rice, something like that. Half a cup to a cup is normally what I'd recommend. Now, obviously, it depends on your individual goals, so don't just go out there blatantly and um, you know, implement that. It really comes down to your personal, uh, your medical history, your, uh, your personal goals, your current weight, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm just telling you what, what I do. So I weigh about 69 kilos. I'm um, looking to shred myself to a six pack right now. And after my workouts, that's what I have, half a cup of brown rice along with the vegetables and the protein. So that gives you some idea. Now, most people are eating way too much in the high energy food, hence not getting the outcome that they want. The last point I wanna talk about is fats. Now, fats implies that it's bad. There are some bad fats, but there are also some good fats that are essential for us. So your bad fats are what? Talk to me. Saturated fats, if you said that, 10 points. Saturated fats generally come from your, uh, your animal-based products. Um, so it's the white fat, if you like, that's around the skin of a steak, uh, around the top of the steak. The marbling through meat is also fat. Um, that's saturated, that's not good for you. Uh, we don't want that in our system. That's what goes to cause um, cholesterol, heart disease, some cancers, etc. So we wanna really minimize the amount of saturated fat that we have in our body. Now there's another one that is worse than saturated fats. Does anyone know what that is? Speak to me, come on, tell me, shout it out. And that would be trans fats. Now trans fat is a man-made or woman-made um, fat which is used in products to help increase the shelf life of them. So you'll normally find it in things like uh, biscuits, cookies, cakes, those kinds of things. You'll find some canned products and packet products where it's in. You'll see that uh, certainly in my country, it's uh, legislation requires you to display the trans fat amount that's on the product and it should be very, very small or negative. Okay, so if you think about your vegetables, your fresh foods, zero trans fats. It's only the stuff that comes out of a packet. So what does that tell you? We want to be eating as close to nature as we can. We want to be eating less processed food and eating more things that are fresh that we can uh, you know, quickly make ourselves. I say quickly because if it's going to take you too long, at some point you're going to fall over and not do it. So they're the bad ones. Then the good ones are things like your polyunsaturated fats and your monounsaturated fats. Uh, so uh, these come in the form of um, nuts, fish, avocado, um, oil, certain oils, and, and so forth. So the ones, I'll tell you the ones that I take. If I'm going to take in oil in my body, I want to make sure that it's serving me really well. So I look for the ones that are the highest in omega-3. Now the highest omega-3 uh, sources are things like your fish oil capsules, okay? Very good for, let me tell you what omega-3 does. It helps inflammation, it helps brain function, it helps your immune system, it helps with the aches and pains of joints, almost like oiling a squeaky gate. Really, really powerful, very cheap, readily available uh, around the world and uh, essential for every day. Okay, every day. I take four 1,000 milligram tablets a day. Again, not suggesting that you go out and just start taking 4,000 milligrams, uh, but that's how much I take in the morning, in the evening to help with um, joints, immune system, and obviously the, uh, the busy brain function too. Um, the other sources of them are things like uh, linseed oil, flaxseed oil, richest source of omega-3 on the planet really, really high. So then anything that is flax meal is also really good, nutritionally better than flax seeds because we don't tend to process the seeds so much. 
Uh, but flax meal, which is crushed up flax seeds, is another excellent one. Another one that I regularly take is, is something like walnuts. And I don't take this one as often because it's quite expensive, and that's hemp seeds. Okay, Hemp seeds are also quite rich in omega-3. And like I mentioned before, I'll put chia seeds in my smoothies. Um, so that's a, a really nice one as well, a bit higher in protein too. So I want to make sure that my diet is balanced with all of those things. Now, where most people get it wrong, they get the proportions wrong and exclude a lot of things. Now, this is where if you go to a restaurant, for instance, certainly if you go to a, a fancier restaurant, say here in Australia, what you'll normally find is that it's a relatively small piece of protein. Often it might be the right size for you, but it looks small on the plate because they serve it on a massive plate. Very few vegetables and it's normally quite a lot of high energy food. So for instance, if I think about the last fancy meal I had, it was salmon on a bed of mashed potato with, it had about five beans and that was it. And I'm like, where's the veggies? Because I'm used to eating so much. And this is how most people tend to eat. They say, I'm hungry, so I'm going to fill up on the high energy food the mashed potato, the rice, the pasta, et cetera, et cetera, breads. Underdo the plant-based food and protein is normally under for the whole day. And fats are normally not a consideration for people. But where are most people getting it wrong? Too much saturated fat, too much high energy food too, in the form of uh, processed food somewhere, um, too much salt, too much sodium, all of those things. Not enough protein, not enough plant-based food. So think about your traditional dinner plate, three cups of plant-based food, low energy plant-based food, protein about the size of your palm, maybe a, an inch thick, a couple of centimeters thick, and half a cup to a cup of high energy food. Imagine um, half a cup to a cup of brown rice. Now I say brown rice because nutritionally it's better than your white rice. It's white rice with the husk still on the outside, so nutritionally it's better. Calorie-wise, it's about the same as white or basmati or something like that. If you can't tolerate brown, then go for your white as an example of, of rice. Now, I know I've covered that very, very quickly, but that is a really good snapshot of how you should be eating. Now, I haven't covered water here, uh, but I'll leave that for another time. But if you can consistently get those things right, even for your three meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and you, and you do those things, then you'll go a long way into getting the body you want and the health that you want. You'll become clearer thinking, you'll become more focused, you'll become more productive, your immune system will take a, a positive hit. Like it's really, really fantastic. Really fantastic. And then for your snacks in between, you might just have a piece of fruit, uh, it might be some yogurt, it might be some berries, it could be, you know, a savoury snack like some rice cakes, um, uh, you know, with some peanut butter or, you know, something like that. Um, all of those things, just healthy little snacks that are not big meals, but they're just a snack to get you through to that next meal. Where do you start? Well, start at one to two cups if you're not used to eating much at all. But just remember that the plant-based food is what? It's, it's a low-energy food, but it's also... Fiber. Now, what is fiber used for? Fiber is used for cleaning us out. Okay? If I could be so delicate as to say, make us poo. And if we are not pooing regularly, then we're going to be at much higher risk of having colon cancer. And that's not good for anyone. Okay? So we need to make sure that we keep ourselves very regular so that we don't have any issues there. I know it makes sense in terms of eating more because it's ingrained in us at school and with our parents to you know, eat your veggies, eat your veggies. Well, I'm telling you, this is why you need to eat them to not only get an incredible metabolic boost, but also to make sure that you are um, optimizing your inner health as well. Now, if you say, I don't eat vegetables, then it's time to start. 
you don't have to think about, as I've described it before, I said three cups of vegetables. So I'm implying that you've got your protein there, you've got your vegetables next to that, and then you've got your rice next to that. But it doesn't have to be that way. You could do a stir fry, and I'm not saying eating them plain. I eat them plain at the moment, but um, I'm working towards what most people don't want or don't believe that they can get. So you can add some sauces and things like that because you've got to love your food. It's got to be really flavoursome. The point is about not drowning it in high calorie, um, you know, high calorie sources because you're going to counteract the benefit of uh, you know, everything that you're eating. But like I have a, a delicious sweet and sour meal. I have things like a, a savoury mince. I have like chicken and beef stir fries that are, I tell you, they feel like a sin when you're eating them because they taste so good. Uh, so, you know, it's just about finding those right foods for you that you're really going to love. So you don't have to have just sides of vegetables, um, but it's how you consume them. Like the slow cooker, for instance, is a great way uh, to easily get in um, plenty of vegetables. So I hope this has made sense to you. I hope you can really benefit from this because trust me, when you get this and when you implement this consistently, you'll find it does transform you. It transforms your thinking about food. It transforms the way you look. It transforms the way that your metabolism works. And I tell you, it will start to give you back the confidence in your body that you really want. You can look yourself in the mirror, be proud of what it is that you see and say, man, Rob was right. This is really powerful. People talk about superfoods and I've mentioned about power foods here. All of our plant-based foods are superfoods. It's just, just because we don't necessarily call it a superfood. They're all superfoods. It's just you've got to eat them consistently. You've got to eat them in the right proportions and keep it interesting for you because you've got to love your food and you watch what happens. It's amazing. It's all around us. It's all natural stuff. The trouble is that we work long hours. We work busy lifestyles and we say, I don't have time for that. So I'm going to grab a sandwich. I'm going to grab X, Y, Z. Now, if you went to, down to the local shop, for instance, and you bought, I don't know, let's say a Subway, for instance, you went down to Subway. Now, what's most of a Subway foot long or half foot long um, sandwich? Well, most of it is bread. So what's that? That's your high energy food. Now, even though they can put a fair bit of plant-based food in there, it's not the bigger por portion of the meal, which is what it should be. And the bread should actually be the smaller part, but they get it around the wrong way. You, you buy, or we have things here called, um, like a salad roll, which is a similar thing, or a, a wrap, or that kind of stuff. Most of, and that's not to say that um, you know, they're bad, but you've got to <clears throat> me, make sure that the plant-based food is way, way more than what's uh, wrapped around it. Um, and that's when you start to get the change. So if you want to know more about what it is that you should be eating, I know this is a popular topic, so I'll do some more podcasts in the future. Uh, but if you want me to construct a meal plan for you and tailor something specifically to you, I can do that for you. Go to the mental toughness of body show.com, opt in for a free consult, and we can start a conversation and get you feeling sexy and healthy before you know it. You'll feel change within three days, I tell you, depending on what you're eating right now, you will notice a change and you'll feel cleaner in as little as three days. Stay safe. I'll see you tomorrow.